like that if i run this command it's a become a child child is saying hey i will kill my parent itself tell me is it possible you agree with points all of you yes so child process is saying i will kill my parent which is not possible parent can kill child child cannot kill, kill their own parent so what to do so here i will try a little bit different approach what approach then see guys this is the pid one and this is running with a bash and bash as long as bash is running container is running so now i will go and become a bash how can i become a bash i'll teach you that but don't worry about and i'm becoming a bash right now i become a container pid or look at my screen guys here who are you i am i am inside a container here attach who are you i am a pid one i am pid one right now so here exit see here exit kill will bash correct now and bash will kill pid one get released pid one get released container will also get released and you see that here is gone see that's gone earlier three now two so ultimately what i was trying to tell you no matter which method you use it pid one is running container is running pid one is not running or exited or somehow it get failed container also get exit will you remember this statement all of you will you remember hello yeah now you will say some of you will say rajesh okay i understood that pid one is running so container is running but how do i set the pid one i want so that is a, in a control of developers those who create an image image remember image that's a topic we'll get into after 30 minutes okay so now let's back to this this question can i have this answer this for this question all of you how can i go inside a container hello Touch. yeah so there's one method which is called exit method what is exit method i just tried it out some of the commands so here using this method you can execute please understand that you can execute any executable you can execute any executable inside a container okay you can execute any containers inside a container example let me show you the demo for that okay so i go here so guys look at my screen all of you docker yes there is a two container from ubuntu from http there is a two container docker execute what inside this container what do you want to execute ls see ps i find here see and now i want to execute exec inside this container what you want to execute ps i find here see here it's not executing why because this executable is not inside this container of sttpd but in this x in this ubuntu container it was there so that's the reason it says hey that command which you are trying to run is not set in the path of the container makes sense guys all of you all of you yes. so now the question is question was how to go inside a container so guys you know what remember you are a human being and you always interact with the system using shell remember shell you can interact with the system like a shell uh, bash shell con shell c shell you know different power shell so you can interact with the system so when you use exec you can execute bash with interactive mode you can go inside a container simply what i am saying see using exec command what you can do execute any executable bin bash is also executable but if you have to if you want to interact with it if you want to always hold the sessions for that so you have to interact with it ip interactions then you can go inside a container so how do you do that so if you can my screen guys docker ps docker ps 
and now this container i want to go inside that so docker exec hyphen it okay and then this container and then paste and then bin bash okay so that means what i'm saying a hey, docker execute what this into what container this one in what mode interactive mode and where are you right now tell me where are you right now in the container do whatever you want i am not going to teach you what you want to do inside a container because if you can work in the physical server of linux same thing you can do with the virtual server of linux and the same thing you can do with the container source you can do anything whatever you want installing application downloading of files editing of files so you know, doing something and See here. Who are you? Tell me that you have a great understanding. Who are you? Who am I right now? Which process ID? What is my process ID? On which I am? Seventy-one. Seventy-one. That's correct. Hundred percent correct. So if I want to kill my parent, <laughs> this is not allowed actually. So I have to become one to to kill, uh, bash, and then suicide is also not allowed by the whistle. Not legal. Okay. Anyways, so that's the thing. So I will exit. That means this will be exit. Container will still running, right? So container still run. So guys, I taught you how to go inside a inside a container. Always you have to use a bash. Any bash, you can shell. You you can use any shell. But most of us we are using bash. So let's not talk about anything else. Now the question is, there's one more command which we have is attach. Now I have tried it out. I don't know how many of you have noticed it. I tried attach. Now what is attach is doing? So guys, using attach command. my date you think attach command you can get attached to pid1 tell you can say pid1 session yes. pid1 means see here so pid1 is bash here and sttpd is around this is for the sttpd this is for the bash okay so can i do the pid1 of the both I mean, can I can I do the attach of the both? Let me do that. So, guys, look at my screen. Docker attach. Which one? Who want to contain? And here, where are you? Who, who are you? So, right now, the, you are this. So, I am getting the control bash. Why? Because it's a bash. Bash. It's a bash. So, this is you. You are attached to the PID one. But now, the question is, I will I will exit this container. Will exit why? Because the container is. PID one is not running. Container got executed. You saw that. So how do I how how do I do that? So now you know, guys. I'll, I'm going to start this container first. I'm going to say start this. And now you have it. And now again, I go back right now. And I, I how to come out of it? I don't want to run an exit because the moment I run exit, PID one get killed and PID one get killed. Container will get exit. I don't want the container to be exited. So what do we do? Then, guys, I will teach you one magic commands, control commands, which is a control, control plus p plus q. Will you remember this statement? Why we use it safely? Exit from container without a killing it. Understood now, all of you? So here, if I press control p q and see here, I'm out of the container without killing it. All of you are understanding now. So now, guys, if I attach to a CDP container, let let me see you. Before that, see you. Where are you now? Tell me. Where are you? It's not taking any commands actually. See. Where are you right now? the container of sttpd pid1 please remember that using attach command you can attach to the pid1 of the session so of the container so basically you know what you pid1 you attach to the pid1 of the container of sttpd and which is sttp foreground and this is not your bash so they will understand your command bash it was here so you were able to run the command so what do we do in this case simple guys look at my screen all of you i am going to console i am going to log in from the another machines uh, same machines I'll, i'll i'll do that okay so 
I'm going to log into same machines, okay? And sudo hyphen s. Guys, look at my screen. I am accessing that container, same as container. But you know what? I want the uh, this container, uh, uh, this container uh, network. Uh, so how do we get to the IP address of this container? So inspect command user and things. What is up here? This is the IP address, okay? Now, guys, look at my screen here. HTTP curl curl. I'm hitting. I'm hitting through the command line. Okay, not browser. Okay, and oops, I think it was which IP address? I forgot. It was three. So three. See here. Now I would like to show you here. See. I hit. I access one. See. That means you are seeing the logs of the container. That means any traffic which is built against the Apache, you are seeing the logs. Basically, you are attached to the PID one of the container. But PID one can be anything. And here in HTTP, the PID one is HTTP four ground, which is running your containers all which Makes sense, all of you? Yes. Okay. So remember that this is good for the troubleshooting. And I kill this here. I kill this here, and the container also get killed because of uh, PID one got killed and the got killed. Okay, so this is the one. So now, if someone asks you, "Hey, how do you get inside the container?" You can say, "Hey, exit." You can use the IT mode and shell, or attach. If it is a bash, you can go inside the container. How do you troubleshoot the container? So you can attach to the container PID one and see the logs of it. And there's few other commands also that your Docker logs and most. So yes, this is the way. Now the next question is how can I access the container from outside? So HTTP. But guys, look at my screen here. This is a very important session for all of you. This is a very important session for all of you. There is a container running. I want uh, Apache container to be running also because that's a website, right? So here this is the container I want to run. So Docker start this container. Okay. And now see here. Yes, command. You got the, all this here. So I'm running this container right now. HTTPD. So can I access this container? Just now I access. If you remember that, I access this container and using this command, which is inspect command. I got a IP address. See, I can access, but same IP address. Can I access from outside? See, no. What? Why? Why I'm not able to access? Understand that requirement. So it's very important concept. All of you have to focus it. So see guys here. Mind you, this is your VM. And the VM has certain IP address. Okay. Now this is me somewhere outside in Bangalore. Can I access this IP address? Yes. Which I'm accessing right now in front of you. But you know what? The container is running here. Containers has IP address, but the scope of IP address is limited to the host one. So because of that, this container can you access directly here? No. This is yes. This is no. Why no? Because this container got a local IP address from the Docker. Okay, and the scope of this is Docker. So what do we do in this case? AWS also has a similar situation I explained in the last session. So what we do typically in this case, if there's a one network which is not accessible to another network, what do we do? Mapping. Wonderful. Mapping. What do we do? So guys, I will say, hey, I will travel to this part. Is it possible? Yes. Here we have if zero, and we'll inform, hey, the moment you get the traffic to the, your IP address in a certain port, you map to that particular container, but, uh, divert that to the traffic to that particular container. So now let's say if you want to access this one, 80 port, if you want to access this one, you can map it 81 port. Here you can access to this one, 82 port. Why? Because you cannot have the same port because there's only one network at the host machine. But container is still running on 80 port, 80 port, 80 port, and stuff like that. Did you understand this? 
Uh, here, here we can use same port in all containers. See, node we can not use the same port. Why? Because the node has only one network, and we discussed right in the morning. Only one network, every VMC get it. Because of that, the I port number cannot be duplicated. But in the container, because you also here you get a network, network, network. So here also 80 port, 80 port, 80 port. But the direction should be. I mean, if I hit to the 81 port, this will redirect to 81 port. So 80 port here. And if I hit to the 81 port, this will redirect to 80 port of the container. And if I hit the 82 of the host machine, this will redirect to the 80 uh, 80 port of that particular container. So here is 80, 80, 80, but here is 80, 81, 82. Why? Because the host machine we have only one network in this container also one network, one network, one network. So the uniqueness of port number can be done, which we discussed in the first hour itself. Make sense? Yeah, at least. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so what do we do? How do we do that? So there, guys, there's a manual way to do that also that I'm not teaching you. I'm not teaching you networking, but Docker way. So how do we do that? So for doing it, guys, one command I want to tell you, and that is called run command. So guys, let me ask you one thing. Let me ask you one thing. Let me ask you one thing. Are you comfortable with the pull command? Tell me, pull command. All of you. Hello, I'm asking. Fairly. Yes. Pull will download the image, correct? Are you comfortable with the create command, by the way? Yes. Not very comfortable. Yes. Are you comfortable with the start command? And that's are you good. comfortable? Are you comfortable with attach command? Yes. Attach. Just now I checked. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Correct. Huh? So guys, this whole command is equal to run command. That's all. We use don't use this flow because we use run a lot. So if you want to do pull plus create plus start and attach to the PID one of the container, we do run command. And Many people use hyphen D option, D for detach. So what does that mean? So run hyphen D will do pull plus A plus start and do not attach. By default, it's attached, but do not attach. Will you remember this commands? Okay. Wonderful. So if you can remember that, so from now onwards, guys, I will use these commands. Okay, so guys, now the question is Docker run HTTPD. What does that mean? Tell me. It will pull create, start, and attach. Wonderful. So, can I run it in front of you? Look at my screen, guys. See, I lost my console. Why? Because I attached to the container. I attached to the container. Correct now? PID one. Can I kill this container gone? And it's got exit. So guys, that way I cannot work. It's good for the troubleshooting, but that way I cannot work. So what do we do? Remove. Detach. So now guys, here look at my screen. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, and the magic of Docker. See, it's just 8 GB RAM, and you can create 80 to 90 Apache containers. Are you seeing that magic of Docker? See it. Understood now? Yes. So this is the power of Docker. Don't take it lightly. So the question was, the question was, how can I, how can you, can I access the a container from the outside? So here, you know what, guys? I'm evolving this command slowly. So here, what I'm going to do is, I will say, hey, p, p is port exposed, 80 port, 80 port. 
Now, this is the meaning we should understand this. What is the meaning? This first 80 is a node point. And second 80 is a container port. Node port where the Docker is running, okay? And con container port. I'll put it up one more time. Here, I'll make it 81 external port. Container will be 80 port again because hard coded in our image itself. So here, 811 will be node port. So what should I do in order to access this container? 80, 81, 82, 83, and just so on. You can do that, guys. So can I run it quickly in front of you? So here, this is the 81. This is a 80. So 80. This is 81. This is a 82. This is 83. Each container has a IP address you can access locally, but from outside, I want to access. So for that IP address of node, this is 80. This is 81. This is 82. This is 83. This is 84. 84 we don't have. Got it? All of you? Clear. Simple. So, guys, the question was how do I get inside a container? You can exit IT mode, attach it to build if bash. Come out of the container without killing control PQ. Run is equal to pull plus create plus start plus attach. And if you want to do not attach hyphen D, and if you want to access the container from outside of the host, you have to expose it. Why? Because the container network is different, your node network network is different. So you have to expose using hyphen P option. Are you comfortable, all of you guys? Uh, can we tweak uh, those front ports 81, 82, 83? This one, this internal port of the container? Uh, external, external port. That's yeah, I'm pretty Yes, yes, I'm running 82, 83. You can make it 80, 90 also. It's up to you. Which anything is, is available, you can make it. Okay. It's availability, depends on availability. 82, I run it because it was available. I was doing, I'm not using for some other application or the host machine. Makes sense, guys? So, Rajesh, uh, again, uh, what I can understand here, all the Docker instances, okay, so they, uh, we, we do not have to do any kind of manual configuration of maybe networking. So that is just internal to the host and the Docker instances. That's is that it. a correct statement? Yeah, local scope. Internet is, uh, I mean, sorry, network is local created. Okay. And the whole and, world uh, is like that. Sir. Whole world is like that. Uh, your okay. house is connected with a one LAN, and from then other LAN. It's, it's, the whole world is working like that. LAN okay. connected to one, and that, that's how we connect it to all together. If the whole world is working the port forwarding. Uh, the AWS we did in the last session, we did the port forwarding. Remember the public IP address port? Right. So I, I'm just trying to understand again. Uh, in the beginning, I uh, asked you what is the difference between VM and Docker instances. So basically, basically here we are just doing the port translation. There is no network level configuration that is required in the Docker instances. Correct? No. The major difference, if you say, the VM has a kernel. Container have no kernel. That's a major difference. Now the question is, uh, you, if you are talking in terms of networking, so here understand that uh, the container network which we configured is a local network. We use that, uh, uh, I'll just tell you which, which network. I'm getting into little depth. Uh, I didn't want it to confuse you, but Docker network LS. I'm using this bridge. But you know what? There's a multiple different kind of network drivers are available, like a bridge, NAT, host, none, and so many different drivers are available. So uh, I will not uh, get into that. Otherwise, your understanding of container will get a uh, you know, little bit merged with some different concepts. But in a simple way, I'm telling you, uh, the, the container or VMs you can run with any different different kind of drivers. Now, which driver is useful for you, you, you can define. So by default, the container is getting the bridge network. 
and which is inbuilt actually. This our scope is local. That means uh, these drivers are for giving the IP address and setting up the network at the local scope only, not for outside. Okay. Uh, little bit of networking fundamentally to just send offline. Probably will understand a little bit more. Better. So, so being as a user, consider I'm sitting into the organization, and I want to access Docker server. So, Docker uh -huh. server always available public anyway on public internet. So, Sorry, uh, your voice is breaking. Can you please repeat one more time? Yeah, yeah. So, do so Docker server always be available on public, right? Over the public Docker internet. Docker server is nothing but one I uh, one virtual machines uh, for you, which can be accessible through SSH. Now, the question you should be. Uh, if I run some container inside the Docker server, can I access it from outside? Yes, you have to do this one. Mm -hmm. I'm talking the container. Anyways, Docker, you host, you can access through SSH if it is accessible over the network. Got it? But, yeah. I was talking to the container, not a Docker host. Docker daemon, I don't want to access. I want to access the application running inside a container. Make sense, guys, all of you? Yes. OK, so I have taught you these commands also. Now, guys, I have one, one, one page, and I have listed out all these commands for myself, not for you guys. But you can use it. And that is here. OK. Now, here I have all these commands which I want to try it out. OK, this is the command reference. And so, what I did, I divided all this Docker command, which is here. Look at my screen, all of you. Docker help. These all commands I divide into two sections. What sections? So, there are certain commands which you have to use it first time, like in point version I try now. Now, if you want to work with the container, these are the commands we be helpful for you. And if you want to monitor the container, these are the commands we help you. If you want to work with images, these commands will help you here. And if you want to share an image with the registry, this command will help you. So now, one by one, I just go ahead and see that which command I have used it in this session and which command I have not used it. And accordingly, quick to demo, I'll show you. And then follow it before. And after that, I'll move on to the one very, very important session. And that is called, that is called creating an image, which is a very important. You must all stay till that time, because if you miss that, that session, you miss everything. OK? So can we run the rapid? Rapid fire round sort of things now. All of you? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, guys, uh, attach command, I have run it. CP command. So, guys, here what you can do is let me uh, yeah, see, there's just so many containers, right? So, I need to docker stop all containers and remove all containers. So I need to stop and using the command which is which is uh, uh, yes. So I need to stop all the container. So I'm stopping the container using the command, which is this one. I stop all the container together. And then finally, I'll remove all the container together. Just for a quick demo. So you can have a little bit of clean understanding of it. And let me remove. Done. Guys, it's so simple. Now I have no container. You see that? Done. Now, guys, I'm going to create one container. Docker run icon itd Ubuntu. Uh, Spelling mistake. See, there's only one container I'm having it. Okay, Docker. Yes, this container. Okay, now I'm going to run the rapid file. So look at my screen, guys. Very important session. All of you, you have to, you know. Okay. So, guys, there's one command which is cp. cp command will do what? 
please hear me out you can copy any file from the host machine to the container and from the container to the host machine hello everyone if you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist of 50 plus more tools which are coming under devops devsecops sre data ops gitops etc kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button you would have access to 100s of playlist and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership enjoy thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today